that knowledge must be shared and connected, even more so in these uncertain times. Presenting Uniminds, the online festival connecting industry and academia to hashtag innovate together. Join us for a series of online events and get to know the latest in European and global development trends, innovation, and more. Here, you can find partners and ideas for your challenges and see how industry and academia can join forces to build a smarter, healthier, and sustainable future. The festival will take place online throughout November with an interdisciplinary program, expert panels, and more. Register at the festival website. We're looking forward to hashtag innovate together. Good morning to everyone and once again, welcome to Unimines Festival. My name is Usha Yerše. I'm head of knowledge transfer office at the University of Ljubljana and I'm very happy to be your host today. Today's session is part of Unimines Festival, the festival that celebrates industry academia partnerships and aims to grow innovation community in Slovenia. More information on other Unimines sessions is available on the website. You can find the link in the chat box in Zoom. Uniminds is organized by the Knowledge Transfer Office of University of Ljubljana and University of Maribor in collaboration with our industry partners and supporters from the innovation community. Main partner of the event is Novartis in Slovenia. Also, the festival would not be possible without the support of Republic of Slovenia and the European Regional Development Fund. Today's event will be focusing on smart technologies. We will start with a panel discussing compatibility of scientific research and benefits for companies and continue with three parallel sessions where you will get the insight into some ongoing projects, good collaborative practices and trends in following topics, data engineering, artificial intelligence and data science and business intelligence. So when the first panel is over, don't run away. Wait till we give you new links and then choose your parallel session. Now let me present the moderator of today's panel. We were thinking about the gender balance in the festival as well, but in this field, this is particularly challenging. So who better to invite than a woman who received the title female engineer of the year 2019 and thus became a role model and promoter of women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Dr. Aida Kamishalic Latific is an assistant professor, researcher, and most importantly, left winger of the all woman football team at the University of Maribor, Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. She is also a member of Blockchain Lab, UM Group. Aida, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Joshua, for this presentation. Uh, I'm happy to be here today moderating this panel with five amazing speakers that will join us to discuss the compatibility of uh, scientific research and the benefits it might have for the companies, uh, for the industry. Uh, so I won't make uh, this introduction too long. I'm sure that we are all keen to see and hear our panelists' opinion on this topic. So I will invite our first uh, speaker, Professor uh, Dr. Niko Herakovic, to join me. Uh, Professor Herakovic is uh, head of Hello. the chair for uh, manufacturing technologies and systems and uh, head of laboratory for uh, handling uh, uh, assembly and pneumatics at the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering of University of Ljubljana. Our uh, uh, next panelist is uh, uh, Associate uh, Professor Jure Leskovets. Um, Welcome. Uh, Dr. Leskovets is a chief scientist at the Pinterest and professor of computer science at the Stanford University. Uh, our oh, next. Our next uh, speaker uh, that I would like to join us is uh, Amitya Trampush. Uh, Hello, everyone. 
Mitya Trampo, she's the president of uh, uh, AI for uh, Slovenia initiative within the Association of Informatics and Telecommunications at the Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Slovenia and the managing director of Crea Plus. Uh, our next panelist today is uh, Professor Blas Zupan. Good morning. Good morning, Professor Zupan is the head of uh, the Bioinformatics Laboratory at the Faculty of uh, Computer uh, and Information Science of University of Ljubljana and then adjunct professor at the Baylor College of uh, Medicine in Houston. And our next speaker is uh, Dr. Franz Brachun. Hello, good morning. Good morning, welcome. Uh, Dr. Franz Brachun is a Chief uh, uh, Data Officer at NLB. Welcome, welcome to uh, all. Um, I'll just, oh yeah, okay. Um, I think we can stop sharing this screen. Yeah, great, thank you. Okay, so um, we can report on many great collaborations between the industry and academia in Slovenia, but sometimes it's not that obvious to find this actual compatibility between research uh, and benefits for companies. So at the beginning, um, I'm interested in hearing your examples of uh, good practices uh, on compatibility of scientific research uh, with the needs uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of companies. Um, Nico, you are known uh, as directly involved in uh, the transfer of knowledge uh, from research to the industry. Uh, you and your colleagues uh, built the first smart factory uh, demonstration center in Slovenia. So please share with us your example of, uh, of a good practice of this compatibility of uh, uh, research. Well, thank you for the word, word and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me today. Well, um, yes, um, we've uh, succeeded in building the first demonstration center of a smart factory that really works, <clears throat> not only in Slovenia, but uh, in broader region. I think it's the only one that works in such a way. Uh, and uh, it didn't start just yesterday, it started uh, years ago. And uh, first we started to, of course, basic, to do basic research and uh, applied research. It uh, lasted 10, eight to 10 years. And then um, if we discuss today the, the transfer of the knowledge, of course, this uh, smart factory is a good uh, example how we transfer the knowledge because um, many companies come and visit us, can work with us and can learn about new technologies. But today I would like to, to share an example of what we did with the uh, company Ascava, for example, that is, uh, I think, a very good example uh, how to transfer the knowledge from university to industry. It started uh, yeah, eight years ago, I think, when we started the first project um, with uh, introduction of digitalization of one part of the uh, company Ascava Ristro. And all this basic research and applied research that we, all, the, all this knowledge that we, that we developed in the past years was used here actually, um, because we've worked for a long time uh, on the development of uh, simulation, modeling of production system, logistic systems, and so on, and uh, developing digital twins. And we could transfer this knowledge actually to the company Ascava uh, through this project directly. And the results were really uh, excellent. We call this digital, digital lean actually, because uh, we introduced digital, different digital technologies into the existing traditional lean technology. And the results were really excellent. If I just uh, tell you the, the example, let's say the, we reduced the throughput time in the production line from six weeks to one and a half week. And this was a tremendous uh, success. And uh, through this, we uh, also got the interest from Yaskawa Germany and especially Yaskawa Electric Japan, the, the corporation. And uh, they trusted us then and invited us to transfer knowledge also in the planning of the new factory, uh, robot factory uh, in Europe, the first, the first one that was built outside uh, Japan and, and China. And uh, through this using of these new technologies, uh, digital twins, and not only digital twins, but uh, all digital, digital technologies that, uh, that we use in, in such factory, we could plan 
uh, the whole factory, all processes in the virtual environment before the factory was, was built. And they um, then followed our, let's say, proposals and we analyzed the, the, the every detail of the factory. And at the end, the factory was built, you know, now for two years, it works already. So uh, this is really a good example of how we did it and uh, how we could uh, improve processes in the factory because uh, we used only one third of the layout, original layout, and we got the same capacity of the factory. We introduced completely new methodologies, uh, new approaches, and everything was done in the digital environment. And I think this is a really, really good example how it works. And uh, we found a very good chemistry, let's say, uh, between uh, both uh, partners, university, us, and uh, and the company in in Slovenia, Germany, and and Japan, and uh, of course it was uh, uh, the trust also on the other side because uh, uh, without trust there would be no result. I think. Great. Yeah. Thank you for for sharing this uh, this experience and this uh, this uh, example. Um, Jure, um, I would say that you are integrated in both worlds uh, in companies such as Pinterest and as well as in university uh, environment. I've said that you are a professor of computer science at the Stanford University. So, uh, what would be your example of this good practice? Yeah. I would say that um, it is essential uh, if we, uh, as professors, want our research to have impact. Um, if we want to work on uh, relevant projects, then I think it is essential that we are open um, to the real world. Um, and industry is, is one such example, um, but there are other examples uh, where uh, real problems uh, arise that are kind of too hard uh, uh, to be to be immediately solved and they require research uh, and this can be across problems that society is facing problems around I don't know health as, as we have with the current pandemic as well as uh, various kinds of uh, industrial applications um, and and in my lab at Stanford um, we very consciously look around and talk to many uh, companies non-profits governments and and really try to understand what are the big problems that are um, how to say, that are so hard for them that they don't even know how to start working on. And this is really where we can provide value, right? So when we, for example, engage uh, talking to different uh, organizations, companies, um, we prefer not to work on problems that they know they already have, because for that, they can go hire people and they will solve it for them. Uh, we like to brainstorm things that are f f farther out. Um, and uh, this has... Uh, this strategy has kind of uh, shown to be very, very fruitful. Uh, for example, right now, um, we have uh, another strategy we are employing is that we actually allow uh, researchers from companies to be embedded in, in our group at Stanford. So basically, they come for a year or a year and a half uh, into, our, uh, into our group at Stanford. So we work on various kinds of different research projects, if I talk now as, as a Stanford professor. So, for example, we have a research project with Saudi Aramco, which is a big petroleum company, about using machine learning to faster simulate how the oil flows underground. Uh, we are working with Visa, JP Morgan Chase, uh, the biggest bank in US, about fraud detection and kind of understanding how transactions, uh, financial transactions can be used to understand uh, fraudulent behavior. Um, we are working with Boeing on, you know, how to build better planes and so on. And, and all these things are very important to us because they give us kind of, there is audience for our research. There is kind of a, a, a customer in the broadest sense, right? We say, if we do something, somebody should care about it. So that's why uh, we like this. And then, of course, right out of doing this uh, research projects, uh, ideas for companies come, come uh, students, students get educated. They have the relevant knowledge. They, they get... Uh, employment very easily. We build these relationships uh, over time and it takes a lot of trust and a lot of listening and also a lot of kind of uh, humbleness uh, to, to establish uh, this, this relationship. But then, uh, but then it is great. So out of my lab, we have spinned out um, quite a few companies uh, uh, that were a result of us, you know, starting three, four years before uh, working with industry, understanding wh what the trends are and building kind of solutions for the future. 
Um, and you know, my collaboration with Pinterest started this way. We 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 spinned off a, a company that then got acquired by Pinterest. Um, we we decided that by us being embedded in Pinterest, we'll be able to kind of uh, realize our vision uh, in a in a bigger uh, a bigger environment with uh, I don't know faster growth, more resources, more people. Um, and it has been amazing in some sense, you know, uh, not solving the problems of today, but solving the problems of tomorrow or the day after, right? So my, my role at Pinterest is really to think about what are, what are we going to do in, in two years or in, in and, and, and not just think, but actually start working towards it, you know, in, in about one year, demonstrate feasibility so that then engineering teams can jump on it and keep polishing it for another two years. And then another project has to come. And, uh, and I think what scientists we can do, and I think where we really provide value is that uh, we can solve problems that are not obvious how to be solved and that we, we are able to learn from our mistakes. I think that's, the, that's really the value add. And I think that's also important uh, for the industry to understand, right? We are not here to come and say, I want A, B, C, and D, please put it in a nice bag and uh, here is some money for it, right? Like that's, that's kind of not the collaboration. The collaboration is, I know something is itching me somewhere. I don't know really what it is. Can you help me understand it? And that's, that's where we can uh, really help. Great, yeah. We are talking here all the time of, of a two-way street uh, between a, a companies, industry and, and academia. Um, Mitya, uh, you are working on, on finding the ways how the artificial intelligence could actually benefit the companies uh, within the also artificial uh, AI for Slovenia initiative. So making artificial intelligence useful for companies. Could you give us uh, example, your example of a, of a good practice? Yeah, thank you, thank you. That was a nice introduction uh, from Jure and Nico. Uh, especially Jure, uh, he said uh, real world problems uh, to tackle the other real world problems. Yeah, we are ambitious in our initiative AI for SI, of course, but uh, our goals are, let's say, more practical in terms for Slovenian companies, for benefit for Slovenian companies. That means how to bring benefits of AI to uh, an average company, how to show them the value of AI. Uh, we still uh, need to know that there is still fear uh, of AI, or let's say doubts about AI, uh, so for a, an average company, how should I start using AI? Where? Um, so these questions still are not answered properly. Uh, and of course, our initiative wants to make AI more friendly uh, and also accessible to any company. Um, what Jure and Nico said is a really specialized companies, specialized cases. There are thousands of companies which cannot uh, actually afford that special projects, but they would like to benefit from AI. And of course, there's a lot of work to do. Uh, first, to enlighten a little bit of these companies, what is AI, how you can start implementing AI, what are the benefits? And there's also one area where we think uh, it's necessary to work on is not just to show the, these highlights of AI, which are really well known, um, but maybe also to start thinking of small things where AI also can be helpful and can add value. So this is our mission. Um, we started um, this year and I think um, we are getting a larger community now. And of course, trying to also involve the research um, area or let's say research domain to provide their findings to average Slovenian companies. Great. Um, Blaž, um, you and your colleagues at the university uh, developed a world well-known uh, open source data mining suite called Orange. And the paradigm behind this uh, uh, is in developing solutions that anybody can use to understand data. It's a bit related also to what Mitya uh, said to, to uh, get those solutions available for also those who maybe don't have a um, uh, uh, such uh, financial resources uh, uh, for, for uh, other uh, solutions. So um, could, you, could you give us your example of, of a good practice of this uh, compatibility of research with, uh, with the industry and companies? 
So maybe I'll give you two actually. So one is definitely Lick. Um, so in, in Lick, I think we started about four years ago and um, we actually encountered quite uh, a bit of, uh, I would say, resistance uh, in, in Lick. So, so they were very hesitant. They said, okay, there are so many, um, there are so many tools that we can use. And, but, but we were trying to explain them uh, uh, back then that it's not the tools. The, the tool is really not important. It's actually the, the collaboration. So if you're, looking, if you're working with the, with the locals, like with the, with the university that is in your town, right? Then you have uh, this transfer of knowledge that, uh, I mean, you can just call us, right? We would have a meeting like, like you said, right? The meeting would not be about solving problems that Lake has, but about discussing uh, what do they do and finding new opportunities. Um, for that, I might say that Orange is great because there, there were many cases where we just um, used this tool just to showcase like in a few minutes uh, what, what they could what they could do with with, uh, with the data that had and and that actually so slowly right um, and actually with the help of uh, one big project that we had uh, together with them turned into a very fruitful collaboration where now actually Lee comes to us and asks us uh, I mean uh, they give initiatives it's not um, it's not any longer convincing somebody that uh, I don't know machine learning or data visualization or 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 data can help, but Lake is now, I mean, especially, I'm, I'm talking about the part of Lake, which is uh, in Mingish, uh, the, uh, the biopharmaceuticals. Um, uh, this is now a data-driven company. So before it wasn't, before it was more on intuition and uh, um, um, like uh, knowledge of, uh, of engineers, but now um, there's this big impact of data. They record everything, uh, they, they uh, they store the data of past 10 years and so on. Um, and they really make all decisions based on, uh, based on the data. The other example is a small company, Genialis, which now, uh, which was, uh, which is a spin out from my lab. Um, then it moved from Slovenia to, to US. Uh, it's a successful company. It's a small one with about 30 employees, uh, but it's growing. Um, and I like that uh, actually this company now that uh, they have, uh, they also work with uh, pharmaceutical companies. Now they have, uh, uh, now that they are becoming very successful, they, they try to go back to us, uh, giving us projects, uh, um, also ideas where to work on. And uh, um, finally also uh, scholarships for, for students. And uh, I'm, I mean, Jure was uh, talking about, I mean, uh, how, how his environment supports uh, collaboration with the industry, you have to realize that the Slovenia is completely different, right? So I, I was never approached with a company that would say, that would say okay, um, you know, we, we need highly skilled uh, professionals, so uh, can we give you uh, uh, some grant for a scholarship? This never happened. Uh, well, with one exception, Lig did this once uh, for a year. Um, but um, there are no companies in Slovenia that do that. And, uh, I think uh, comparing U.S. to Slovenia doesn't help. It's a completely different environment. Uh, uh, Slovenia has to work differently than uh, U.S. I, I don't think that any of the practices, I mean, um, sincerely, and I was talking with Yuri, you remember probably 10 years back, we talked about how to actually have some practices from U.S. Uh, work out here. I also teach in, uh, teach in the States. I work also in the States. No practices are transferable uh, to, to, to Slovenia directly. We, we have to work differently and it's going to be way slower. Thank you for, for, uh, for this, uh, for your uh, thoughts. Um, um, I would like also now to, to hear, uh, Franz, uh, you have over uh, 20 uh, years of, uh, of uh, experience in various banking fields. Uh, and as a chief data officer, you are engaged in the introduction of artificial intelligence in the organization. So could you share with us your, um, your example of, of a good practice? Um, Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be with you today. Of course, I have a lot of experience in banking, but also I have a lot of experience in machine learning because probably 20, 30 years ago, it was called something like uh, pattern recognition or whatever you call it. But uh, during these years, 
I recognize that uh, we have several levels of problems in industry or in business that we have to tackle. Uh, when we started, uh, let's say, systematically to build our capabilities to implement and introduce, uh, let's say, machine learning uh, solutions in our regular business, it was uh, approximately four years ago, we started with actually uh, making uh, housekeeping work. What that uh, means, actually we started with our data because we know that data are very important if we would like to have some uh, useful results from this machine learning approaches to help us in our business. Uh, the next uh, step was of course to find out uh, partners uh, which helped us to introduce first uh, to 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 make first steps in uh, this uh, machine learning uh, uh, way of working in our bank, because uh, in banking industry, of course, we had in the past several models in the risk department related to let's say more or less statistical models based on let's say mainly on logistic regression. And our colleagues were working simple models for credit scoring like that. But of course, uh, nowadays uh, we need uh, more powerful models to introduce to cover all other areas in the bank. For example, uh, customer behavior or next best offer uh, and various other solutions. And we were lucky to find a Slovenian company that helped us at the beginning to build our, our internal team. So we know that we don't have internal know-how and we found external company which helped us to build internal team. And now we have internal team of machine learning engineers, if we call them uh, like that. Nowadays, so we started with these two layers. So uh, let's say making our data in good shape and build uh, know-how how to build this machine learning models. Then we had one obstacle that is very important in business. And that obstacle, not obstacle, but let's say uh, issue, it was that uh, how to connect this machine learning engineers and business people. They talk completely different language. So we have a lot of problems to solve this connection between people who are capable to build models and people who are at the end of the day, users of these models. And we found out that we need additional rule in our bank, additional know-how. We call this data translators. It is something like people who are the bridge between business people and machine learning engineers. And these people know very well what are the business problems, how to phrase these problems in language which uh, machine learning uh, uh, people can understand and then cooperate with them when these uh, people are building models to check if they understand them correctly, if these models are prepared uh, in a way that uh, are useful for, for, for regular business because you know we can build a very complex model, very powerful model, but if this model is not understandable to end user, it will not be used. And that is very important uh, to have in mind when you are going to this uh, uh, introduction of uh, such kind of technology. So in, if in one sentence I express our experience, it was that we need three kinds of different rules with different, uh, different uh, know-how to be able to introduce machine learning or artificial intelligence solutions in our uh, regular business. These are traditional data engineers who are responsible for uh, data management task. Then we have machine learning uh, experts who are responsible for building models. And then we have the data translators who are responsible to be business view uh, on this, uh, let's say data science environment. And right now, uh, what is our biggest issue is that we can find uh, uh, training for data engineers. We can find trainings for machine learning experts, but it is very hard to find trainings for data translators because this is some kind 
intermixture between economics, organization, psychology, computer science, etc. And that's uh, one way that we are uh, trying to find to, to retrain our people to be capable to work in this new environment. That's our experience. Thank you very much. You have opened um, another really important issue um, uh, through all of this is actually uh, about the, the graduates and professionals and the skills uh, that we want our graduates to, to, to obtain and to have and that those skills would serve the companies when, when they tackle uh, the, the real world problems, if we are talking this way. Um, so um, here is a probably a good moment to, to maybe give us uh, uh, your thoughts on, on this. Is our CISNA already, uh, Blash mentioned that uh, um, he's integrated in, in um, both worlds uh, as, a, as a professor at the uh, uh, university, well, in Ljubljana and also in the United States. And you could see these differences um, between our system and, and their system. Um, uh, would, what would you say, Blaj, are we capable of producing new, um, let's say those new skills uh, on time? Um, because we know that our system is a bit more rigid than uh, probably anywhere um, else in, in uh, Europe or, or in the United States especially. And when we want to introduce new competencies uh, to our graduates, it, it takes time. So are we capable of producing uh, 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 graduates and professionals uh, that uh, will be on time in, in uh, companies or such as NLB and, and help them uh, solve their problems? No, well, I would say sure, right? But let me just give one example. I think uh, probably the um, probably the most known uh, person in machine learning and healthcare and bioinformatics is Marinka Zitnik. So Marinka Zitnik. Uh, made her uh, undergrad studies here in Ljubljana, uh, finished her PhD in Ljubljana, then moved to Stanford with Jura, right? And, and she's there. So like in, I don't know, I think it's about three years after uh, she finished the PhD here in Ljubljana. So are we able to, yes, I mean, Jura also studied here, right? So, so they're like Slovenians all over this place. I mean, machine learning is like packed with uh, great uh, people, in, I mean, from Slovenia, right? That, have a huge impact, right? Uh, and uh, I mean, this is not a, it's not that every country does that, right? Slovenia is one of the smallest countries in the world, right? Has some of the most influential people in machine learning, right? Uh, I mean, we, we started at uh, University of Ljubljana program called uh, Data Science. Uh, so this year, it runs only a second year, right? Uh, I think the over enrollment to that particular study was fivefold, right? So, so for position, uh, so so for 20 places, uh, I think there were 100 applications, right? Uh, uh, and all of them are, I mean, so I, I teach there, the students are simply great. I mean, they can make huge impacts. So, so the, I mean, the short answer is yes, right? Uh, yeah. Um, Jure, you are also the founder uh, and uh, um, board member of the ASAP. Um, it's American Slovenian Education Foundation. So when we are talking about talents, probably it's also a good moment to, to uh, maybe mention this and uh, how you try actually to help those young people um, integrate and maybe find this uh, compatibility with their research work and, and the companies. Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. I just kind of wanted to say, uh, to, to agree to agree with, uh, with what Vlaž was saying. I, I, I mean, you know, uh, we are the ones, or you are the ones who are creating the rules, right? So saying we are too rigid, it doesn't mean that, you know, rig rigidity is given from the universe and the world is that way. No, I mean, we create that world, right? So if we want to be less rigid, then we can just decide and we can be less rigid tomorrow. There is no reason uh, to be rigid unless we think that that rigidity is beneficial to us all. And I think it'd be hard to find such a person who would agree with this, right? So basically what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that there is, there is a lot of opportunity and uh, um, we can change things, right? It, it doesn't have to be this way. And, and we have amazing students. Uh, we also have um, amazing companies. Uh, uh, I think on academia side, we, we need to realize that we are educating the workforce of the future. So if we are educating the workforce of the future, then we need to be in touch 
uh, with, and get feedback from whoever will provide work uh, to these people we are educating. I mean, right, not everyone we educate uh, will become a, a theoretician or a professor and so on. So I think it is important to have a very, um, you know, flexible and, and widely um, applicable programs, right? And I, I feel that in some sense, a large part of uh, the Slovenian educational system is very rigid, right? Like you can, you know, I know this is changing, but in my time, you there were only like, you, you could be three types of a computer scientist and, and, you know, you could either choose one, two or three, and that was fixed. At Stanford, you can be, we, we can generate 2 billion different computer scientists because everyone can choose their own classes and, and everyone can be their own person. Somebody can become an iPhone application developer and somebody can be proving theorems. And it's not that one is better than the other or that whoever is a great, uh, I don't know, application developer needs to be able to prove theorems. No, they don't, right? So um, I think if we give more freedom to, to students, uh, the students will make uh, will make the the right decisions um and i think in some sense we need to trust uh, students more to say this right like you know um I, I again if i talk about stanford we have no uh mastermind who says oh now ai is coming and we need to do this right it's like we give students so much uh, freedom that they naturally kind of fluctuate between different uh, different areas and wherever we see there is need, we provide more classes and where we see that certain areas are kind of slowly dying out, we still keep them, but we reduce um, what we give there, right? So I think that's one perhaps important thing. Another important thing that we do a lot is that we send our students to industry over the summer, right? Like we have super strong um, summer internship programs from, from small companies to large companies to research labs. And really fight for the talent is, is much like, we, I don't know, we, we really try to generate talent and companies really try to have access to that talent and build a relationship so that if you have someone who has been working with you over the summer, you get to know them, they get to know you, you have a relationship, it's much easier, much easier to hire and prevents you from making bad hires, uh, especially for small companies, hiring a person who doesn't fit can be devastating. Um, and then, I mean, this is, in, I think, in, in, on one end. The other end is uh, the university really tries, or professors, um, we try to create various kinds of affiliate programs where we say, aha, we think that AI and safety is coming up. You know, and three professors at Stanford would team up and say, here we have a program in AI safety. And it would be a training program for companies so that for some membership fee, they get uh, uh, access to the latest research, they get training seminars and so on, that we kind of educate them about these topics, right? So what I want to say is we as academics, we are not in some ivory tower, you know, where people come and, and they bow in front of us we proactively, proactively reach out and seek where can we make um, that connection. And, and just like, uh, as, as, I, as I've been uh, saying this, right, is then what we also, I think, need to realize is, as, as Blaž was saying, Slovenia is small, but Slovenia is much larger than, the, you know, than, than its borders. And there is a, a lot of uh, Slo uh, Slovenians all over, all over the world who can, who can, with whom we can build connections um, and, and create uh, the flow um, uh, of, uh, of uh, students, training, things like that, right? And, uh, uh, you know, if we were mentioning Barinka before, it was very hard to go to Harvard University and, uh, and, and spend there two months and learn how Harvard is doing things. Right now, with Marinka being professor at Harvard, we, we can visit Harvard University and see, you know, what they are doing well and what we are doing. Right. So, uh, out of this uh, 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 this this uh, kind of this need, uh, five years ago, we we professors in in California and now all over the world, we established ASEF, uh, which is basically uh, providing fellowship programs for Slovenian students to go do summer uh, internships uh, with uh, various Slovenian professors all over the world. Over 50 of them today. Um, and we are also having a fellowship program for uh, Slovenians living abroad to come to Slovenia, spend the summer here, learn language, learn culture, but actually also spend time either working in industry, working in a research lab, so that they also professionally uh, develop. And for example, what is uh, interesting is that a quarter of these people actually stay in Slovenia. 
right? So these are, you know, second, third generation from United States, Argentina, Canada. They come here, they learn the culture, learn the language, visit their relatives, uh, work in a company, uh, and they say, oh, I like it here so much, I'll just stay here. Or some decide to do a PhD here and so on. So I think there is a lot of opportunity to build this kind of cross uh, cross uh, uh, cross country uh, connections and 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 realize right that in some sense slovenia is small and and we always went abroad like it's too small to have all the knowledge here we have to go abroad to get new experiences and then we also have to come back to um uh, to share those experiences here and i think mm-hmm. we need to do more for this uh, for this flow um, that i think Thank is very you. important Thank you very much for sharing all these uh, um, experiences, and I hope that we will be able to at least uh, some of those uh, implement and, and uh, on our also our system. Unfortunately, we are uh, uh, running out of time. I mean, there are so many questions that we could discuss and, and, and talk about, but just uh, um, quickly uh, to, to wrap up, maybe Nico, would you like to add something also um, related to this uh, um, about the, the staff and the, the uh, graduates that, that we are, uh, that, that we need for, for our companies? Uh, just the, the microphone is. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, a lot has been already said, but probably um, because I, I was working also in, in Germany, it was completely different uh, in cooperation with, with uh, uh, factories or with industry. Uh, I think uh, it's also about the, the culture, not, not the culture of, of our companies. Um, they really don't see what they can get from us. And I think that uh, if uh, we start this cooperation uh, more uh, actively and deeply and uh, really that we trust each other, that we understand each other. This is very important. So a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, um, let's say, pilot projects should be done between companies and, and university laboratories and so on. Uh, so I think this is very important also how to, how to make engineers for, for companies. So if these uh, students can work with the projects, and uh, they can feel the real life because now they just get a lot of uh, uh, theor- theoretical knowledge at the university. They don't know actually what is going on in the reality. If they uh, start feeling this real life also during the studies through those projects, uh, they could be um, much better. They could get a lot of uh, practical knowledge and a lot of theoretical knowledge. They could understand, ask us, us more, uh, and uh, they can also make a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, a lot of uh, knowledge also in the, in the companies and know the people and get uh, get uh, the jobs there. So uh, in such a way, also co- companies can get uh, engineers that they need. I think this is, uh, in my opinion, that's what we have done in Germany when I worked there. And this was a really good example and good practice. And uh, I really miss this in Slovenia. And it's not only about the university and about us that we are too rigid. I think that also the companies are too rigid and they should change a little bit. Yeah, great, a great, uh, great point. I, I can see that Usha is uh, with us, uh, that we are really running out of, <laughs> of time. Um, I wanted also to, to hear the last word from Mitya. Maybe if you want one sentence, something to, to add and... <laughs> and then finish, yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I would like to see, uh, from our perspective, I would like to see that maybe the, the research, the labs and researchers get connected more to more companies directly. Not just uh, today in Slovenia, I think there are just few spin-offs from professors who are working on AI, artificial intelligence. I would like to them to reach broader. Uh, this is somehow limited. So if it's possible to just open to be accessible to other companies as well, not just the spin-offs of, of few professors. Okay, great. Um, Usha, I would uh, now, uh... Uh, give you the word because because we have to finish and uh, I would like to thank all the panelists for your thoughts for sharing your experiences. Uh, 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 Thank you very much. Thank you Aida uh, and thank you for all the guests. I think this was very insightful. Um, Now I'm kindly inviting you to continue debating with Hulaev and don't run away because we're now moving to parallel sessions. 
Uh, we have three parallel sessions, data engineering, artificial intelligence, and data science and business intelligence. And in the chat box, you will see uh, the links to these parallel sessions and just choose one. And don't worry, even if you want to listen to the rest uh, of the two, you can still, everything will be recorded and available in Ufuva app. So now click on one of the links and see you in the parallel session. Thank you again, everybody, and see you there. Bye.